Hey guys, welcome to BP, The Bible Perspective. Michael Bloomberg is fast becoming the number one contender to defeat Donald Trump in the upcoming presidential elections. Now, in order for him to do that, he has to receive the vast majority of black support. The question I want to pose is, should the black community forgive him for his adamant support of the New York City's racist stop and frisk policies? Now, before we get into it, please like and share these videos and subscribe to BP The Bible Perspective. And if you have a comment or question, feel free to express it in the box below. Now in this democratic field that is hoping to unseat Donald Trump, the number one thing that seems to be expressed louder than anything is that who can defeat Donald Trump? Now, certainly while the candidates are expressing and talking about their issues, Make no mistake, the number one issue is who can defeat President Trump. Now, out of the hopefuls, I don't see anyone who really can. Joe Biden is slipping in his uh, support, while Bernie uh, Sanders is enjoying a bump up. I don't believe on a one-to-one -one, uh, 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 fight he can defeat Trump. I'm not going to even mention Elizabeth Warren. I don't think she's strong enough, period. I think her ideology is just way out there. Now, Pete Buttigieg has a chance, and he certainly could be that dark horse, but I think he has a gay problem. I don't think the nation is ready to accept him and his husband. Now, the, uh, so that leaves Donald, I mean, that leaves Michael Bloomberg, who is flooding the media with his ads. It's certainly his presence is growing as well as his numbers. So his ad campaigns are having an effect. Now Michael Bloomberg, of course, is the former New York City mayor, three-term mayor. He is also majority owner of Bloomberg News. If you turn on your cable news, then you see Bloomberg News, and as well as the other ventures that he has. His net worth is about 60 billion plus. That gives him a lot of money, and he's pledged to spend it. Put it this way, he could pledge to spend a billion dollars, okay, in ads and in campaigning for his presidential bid. In the past, he's even pledged to spend money just to defeat Donald Trump. And I'm th now, don't, don't make me, uh, I think he had a very good chance, and I think, again, we're going to see with the upcoming uh, Super Tuesday how well he does. Now, the problem that I think he has is that he passed as a mayor supporting the New York City's stop and frisk policies is a sore spot among many African-Americans, myself included. Now, I'm not a New Yorker, but I understand how a policy, a racist policy, uh, hurt the black community. And before we understand that, we have to understand what stop and frisk was. Now, stop and frisk is a police tool to stop, detain, question, and frisk or search uh, a suspect. Now, in order to do that under normal circumstances, you have to have probable cause. In other words, you have to have an articulable probable cause that this suspect is, has committed a crime, suspected of committing a crime, or will commit a crime. That is basically the general premise. And that is so as not to violate his uh, constitutional rights. Now, the policy also is designed to protect police officers. So while, and during the time that it was implemented, New York City had a high crime rate. The problem that happened with New York, they went above and beyond the, uh, uh, the constitutional uh, uh, protections of the citizens. Basically, what they did was, they said, hey, uh, forget probable cause. It's what the police officer thought. So, for example, if a police officer saw an African-American or any individual, because when they implemented the law, they said, by the way, remember, this is New York City's. Stop and frisk is a common police tactic or tool used. 
But New York City, when they went, they went way beyond and they implemented, they added the, their policy that a police officer can, if he thinks, not probable cause, but simply if he thinks, then he could stop, detain, question, and frisk. Now you may say, and so certainly the defenders of it, and Bloomberg was one. He was an adamant defender of the stop and frisk policy. And I'm going to get to why he believed that or why he defended it so. Because the mindset, I think, is very important. The problem with the New York City stop and frisk is that while the defenders say, but look, you needed it in the high crime areas. And guess what? The high crime areas just so happen to be black. Okay. Well, there's some merit to the statement. And we can get into a long discussion as to the conditions of the inner city. That's not what stop and frisk panned out to be. Here's the problem with New York City stop and frisk. It empowered officers. So let's say you, okay, we're going to implement it in the high crime areas. The problem is that they targeted black and brown men, primarily. 90% of the time, New York City has, at the time, almost 50% plus of a black population. Now again, you may say, well, but the blacks commit more crime. All right, putting that aside... New York City's own numbers would stop and frisk. Now, remember I said they, they targeted black and brown 90% of the time. But here's the problem. 84% of the time, there was no reason for the stop. They didn't find drugs. They didn't find crime. They didn't find, uh, I mean, weapons. They didn't find, uh, there was no subs uh, suspicion of a crime. He hadn't, him, uh, he hadn't committed a crime, and he wasn't about to commit a crime. 84% of the time. Let that sink in. 84% of the time. And while they said, well, when they implemented the law, they said, well, we're not targeting African Americans. That's even worse. Because your own numbers proved and demonstrated beyond a shadow of a doubt that the New York City police officers were racist because they targeted African Americans and Hispanics 90% of the time, finding only 13%, which means 84% of the time, there was no reason for the stop. You see, here's the problem that I have with it. As an African-American man, I don't commit crime. I don't never committed crime. I, have, I don't have a police record. I've never been to jail, never been to prison. I don't commit crime. So there's never a reason to suspect me of a crime. There's never a reason to question me. Okay, maybe you can question me. But there's never a reason to stop and frisk me and to be treated like a criminal. It is humiliating because what the New York police officers would do, they would throw me and they would pull up on young uh, African-American men and either throw them across their cars or throw them across the walls or uh, across a wall and search them. Why? Because they could. And that's what the numbers prove. The numbers prove that they were racist. Here's another interesting thing. Down in Wall Street, where everyone has heard, allegedly, there's plenty of cocaine, pills. Now, we don't know the numbers because the police don't stop and frisk in that uh, district. So how much crime is there with drug use? Now, my point is, we don't know because they don't target it. The problem with, I have with Bloomberg is that he adamantly defended the policy. Not only did he adamantly defend the, product, uh, the policy, he said because those people need that, uh, those people need that policing. Yet, he said nothing about how come you guys are not policing over in Wall Street. You see? And even after... A judge ruled that the law was unconstitutional. And let me add something here. She didn't rule that stop and frisk was unconstitutional. As we stated earlier, stop and frisk is a viable police tool. 
And here's my point with this. I'm not advocating that we take any legitimate crime-fighting investigative tools away from the police. I'm saying give them more. But there's no reason to give them powers that extend and go beyond the individual constitutional rights, which they did. Do good police working. There are plenty of bad guys out there. There are plenty of drug dealers, gangbangers, right? The point is that they were targeting any and everyone by their whims. By the way, that also included black police officers. Black police officers walked there who stopped and frisked. African Americans did so because what? They can. That was they were part of that racist regime as well. Why? Because guess what? They can. Like I say, you didn't do it on Wall Street. And here's the thing though, he adequately Bloomberg ad, he adamantly defended it and even tried to appeal it. So my point is, why? Why were you so bent on defending this by your own numbers? Now, he's a businessman. Suppose I went to Bloomberg with a deal and said, hey, I want you to invest a billion dollars in my deal. So he says, like the businessman that he is, well, what are your numbers? Tell me your numbers, right? And I says, well, you know what? It's a good idea. Very good idea. But 84% of the time, we lost money, right? 84% of the time, he would throw me out of his office, probably fire the person who let me in in the first place. Why? The numbers don't match. And with those kind of numbers that show you that was a dismal failure, more than that, it proved it was a racist policy. So the question is, should we forgive him for that policy? Well, I'm going to say that forgiveness is in the eye of the beholder. I'm willing to move past if he says, okay, and he has addressed the issue. So all of the kind of clips that you're going to hear are old clips coming from that era. Obviously, since he's run for president, right, he's now seen the light. I think he has some problems with his repentance because since 2013, that's when uh, Stop and Fish was overturned. He really didn't say anything. And even after that, as I said, he really maintained his defense of the policy. And it wasn't until he began to, uh, uh, I, that he announced his presidential run, that he started campaigning, that he addressed the issue of, of Stop and Frisk. He did apologize, went to a black church, he apologized. He said, I was wrong in my perception, the way I saw it, he said he was wrong. Okay. Now, I don't know his heart. I can't speak for his heart. I'm willing to move past. If he says if he makes a good case for a president, by the way, I'm neither Democrat or Republican. OK, I don't have a in that respect, have a dog in the hunt. I can say I'm looking for any and everyone who presents a good case who can say, you know what? I'm going to have the best interest of America right now. I don't think Donald Trump has the best interest of America. OK, so am I willing to entertain that uh, a Bloomberg can defeat him? I'm willing to do it. I'm just not necessarily convinced that his heart has changed. But like a lot of people who have heart issues, past and things like that, we are all works in progress. But I do still have a major issue with his adamantly defending the stop and fish policies. Okay, guys, that's my, perfect, uh, that's my perspective. I'll see you next time.